Let me show you how I took scrap material, decorative foils, and created this. We show our students in our classes how to create countertops, and this was just some leftover material, so they made something cute. We've already gotten two coats of the Stone Coat countertop undercoating. I've let it dry. I actually let it dry overnight. Uh, with the undercoating, you only have to let it dry for four hours. If you're using a latex paint, you need to let that dry for 24 hours. So the first thing that we're gonna do, if you'll notice, on this rock face edge, it's got some really highs and lows, very uh, rough, and that's what I want. Now this may not be something that I would want in a kitchen because of the deep highs and lows, but on an end table, which is what this is gonna be, I think it's gonna be perfect. So what I wanna do first is I wanna create some depth. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna paint my edges gold and I'm gonna kind of put this over the top because I don't want that gold to really get out of control. And I'm just gonna lightly fog my edges. Some areas may be a little brighter than other areas, I would say. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back with some black and we're gonna hide and mute some of that gold. All right, so now that the gold is dry, I don't want my edges to be so bold. I want to come back and kind of mute all of that out. So I'm gonna come in with spray paint on a bag and I'm gonna tap it and mute that back down so that you're really not seeing that much of the gold. It's just gonna be a hint. Now I'm not worried that I'm using a gloss spray paint over a more matte color because as we move through the process and we put the foil down, you won't be able to tell any of that sheen change. You can also come in here with an acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be a spray paint. You can actually come back with the same paint that you use to paint your table. I'm just doing a spray paint because I wanna be able to pour really quickly and not have to wait for that acrylic to dry. Okay, so the paint is dry and now I'm gonna come back with our adhesive foil. The foil that I use, I absolutely love, love, love. It's by Artsyville. I'll have a link in the uh, description of this video and it will have a coupon code as well. Um, I love, love this product because once it gets to a tack where it dries and it's tacky, it'll never move beyond that tackiness until you put something on top of it. So if you're working and you wanna lay your adhesive down, but you don't have time to put the foil on top, you can come back in 10 minutes, you can come back in two hours, you can come back in 10 days. It doesn't matter, it's never gonna fully dry or fully uh, remove all that stickiness until the foil is put on top of it. All right, so you apply it just kind of like you would a paint. It's the consistency of Elmer's glue. Now, the foil is only going to stick where there's adhesive. Now, the way that I've kind of envisioned this table is I want my foil to kind of bleed down just a little bit over my edges, but I don't want it to be really hard edges. So when I get down here to the edge, I'm just gonna barely roll so that I only have a little bit of that adhesive and only a little bit of that foil will grab on and I won't have a really hard edge. The rock edge is a little sharper on the back edge than it is on the front edge. So I'm just gonna kinda pull that glue real lightly and then very lightly. I don't wanna leave a lot of texture. So I'm gonna very lightly go back over that and then add some more. You can see how sometimes the adhesive goes real low and sometimes it kind of stays high. That's kind of the look that I'm going for. You don't want to thin this adhesive out too much. You want to have good coverage so that it re helps release that foil off the carrier really nicely. So if you guys have never used foils, you really need to check out Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. 
she's got some amazing projects with the foils. You can put it on furniture, you can put it on tumblers, you can put it on clothing, countertops, just whatever you can think of. So the adhesive is applied pretty um, heavy, except for the edges. We'll let this dry. It will dry crystal clear about 45 minutes and then we'll go to the next step. All right, our glue is dry. And depending on where you are, your humidity, your heat, that's gonna determine how long you have to wait for the adhesive to dry. In our environment, sometimes we can wait about 45 minutes and it's always best if you have the time to let it dry overnight. Also, it depends on what foil you're using. Some foils release really easily. Some foils are a little hard and take a little more backbone to get them to release properly. So in this case, I know this foil releases really well. So letting my glue dry for an hour or two is fine. All right, so what are foils? Foils are designs or patterns that are metallicized onto a carrier. And in this case, the carrier is a clear piece of plastic. So this is what you're actually seeing when you lay it down on the surface. You're looking through the clear plastic and this is the actual material. Alrighty, so to check your glue, to ensure that it's dry, take your finger and you're just gonna tap the surface and pull it up. You'll hear kind of a popping sound and then your finger will come off clean. If it comes off and your finger is sticky, that means the glue is not quite dry enough. All right, so what I like to do, I want this surface to have almost a rustic look. I really like to take my foil and kind of crunch it up a little bit. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give a visual texture as I lay it down on the surface. It also kind of helps me to control the foil. It doesn't move as much. So I'm gonna lay it down one end and very lightly with a towel or a soft rag, I'm just gonna kind of lay it down. Now, if I lay it down crooked, I can always kind of burp it back up and readjust. There we go. Now, I just wanna kind of tap it down to hold it in place. Now, what I want you to really pay attention to, if I go all the way to the edge, with my rag or with my little scrubber, it's gonna leave a hard edge or a hard line where the foil stops. So when I actually go to transfer the pattern onto the substrate, I wanna go about a half an inch or so away from that edge so that I get a very soft edge. I don't get a hard edge. That way, when I come back, and overlap, you're not gonna see a really hard line. All right, now these little wrinkles, I'm actually liking that, but if you don't, you can burp up your foil, lay it back down flat, and then rub and scrub. Now, I like the look of those little air bubbles because it gives me a really cool design on top. And actually, this is transferring really good. I really like that. So I'll go all the way down. Also, you don't want to scrub in a circular motion because that scrubbing will transfer down into your adhesive and you may possibly see that pattern. Now, depending on what foil you're using, some foils release super easy, some are a little bit harder. So it's always a great idea to do a test piece and make sure you kind of know what your foil that you're working with. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge. See how that's a soft line there? That's what I wanna keep. I wanna keep that soft line and go a little bit more. All right. See how I've got the uh, design on the plastic. It didn't release quite as well. I'm gonna take that back and I'm gonna scrub a little harder. Now you can see it's releasing better. Now you're never gonna get a 100% release from your foil. 
So it's really important that you understand that and you work that into your design element. Now you can see as the design comes off the plastic, I'm left with my clear plastic carrier. All right. All right, so you see I have a little bit of a salvage on the edge. That's what you should see. Okay, I'm gonna get my next piece, crunch it up, and now I'm gonna overlap my two seams. Now, because this foil doesn't have a distinct pattern, I don't have to worry about lining up any pattern as if I were maybe doing stripes. I can just kind of overlap that and be good. Now, what I don't want to do is go and scrape over what's already down because I could easily scratch it. And now you can see how there's no seam. I want to go to the edge, leaving a very soft seam and pull it off. All right, I'll cut one more small piece and we'll finish off the end. So I'm gonna give you an example of, see these little air pockets, I guess, that are leaving these little lines. So what you can do is when you pull it, you may not be able to see on the camera, but there's some little lines here where the pattern didn't go down onto the glue. So by burping it and then laying it back down, you'll fill in any of those lines. Same thing here. I'm gonna lift up, lay it back flat. That way I ensure that I get all of those lines out. Okay, so once you pull the foil off and it's covered the adhesive, your adhesive is no longer sticky because it has foil. So if you feel like right there is sticky and it's sticky because I don't have foil there. So now I'm gonna start coming back and I'm gonna start filling in all these gaps. So I'm gonna start on this corner because I didn't put the adhesive all the way around the edge. So now it's just gonna start pulling off just where I had a little bit of that adhesive and you can see it's starting to pull off that little area. So this is where you can use your, your salvage pieces to go back and fill in. And I'm kind of bringing that pattern over the edge. Okay, so we're ready to go to the next step, which is to pour our epoxy. Okay, so after we cut, and then I stepped away from the table and got a look from a distance, I really don't like my edges. What I'm seeing is too much black and it's not blending over well enough. So what I think I'm gonna do is come back in with the gold and I'm gonna kind of blend these edges and that foil together. So it looks a little more natural. So I'm coming back in here with our spray paint, our gold spray paint, and I'm very lightly tapping. So once I start tapping it out on my edge, I'll kind of bring it up into the top of the surface. So again, I don't have a hard line. I'm kind of bringing this gold up to the top and I'm making everything kind of flow a lot better. Compare this to that you can really see the difference. Okay, I love how the edge turned out, but my faux finishing creativity is sneaking in and I want to dull down that gold just a little bit. I don't want it to be so bright. So I'm gonna come in with a glaze. This just happens to be a glaze that I bought at Lowe's. You can make your glaze out of just about any kind of paint. Floetrol, you can do a water-based paint. You can use mineral spirits and an oil-based paint. I kind of recommend that you go with an acrylic or a water-based uh, glaze. Uh, it's just the easiest to work with. All right, so I've got an old chip brush and I'm just gonna come over here and I'm just gonna paint my edge. Now this is Van Dyke Brown. It's what I use the most of the time. It's just an antiquing glaze. So now that I have that on, on there and because it's a glaze, I have plenty of time to work it. So now I'm just gonna come back and I'm just gonna remove a little bit of that by tapping. And now what I've done is I've softened that real bright shiny of that gold. And I've also made it look a little more aged. I can tap out, remove as much or as little as I want. And I think I'm gonna kind of bring that 
up on top a little bit. See what it looks like on top of the foil. I may want to kind of tap and tone down that, that foil just a little bit. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. It's not quite so bright. Oh, I like that. All right. I just like this because I know as I'm actually going to put it in my house and I don't want that real bright gold to overpower the rest of my decor. And you could only apply it to the edge. I think that's actually what I'm going to do. So it kind of gives it a vignette type of an appearance where just my edges are antiqued. Love it, love it, love it. All right, the glaze is dry, the edges are dry. I absolutely love how it looks so far. So what we're gonna do now is put a layer of clear epoxy. And the only thing I'm gonna put in there is a little tiny bit of gold dust. And all that's gonna do is kind of give a little twinkle every so often if the light hits it just right. I don't want that gold dust to take over. Three ounces per square foot, stone coat countertop epoxy. Love it, love it, love it. I am using the regular epoxy. All right, so look how just that little bit of epoxy over the top makes it all start to pop. All right, so you know I love to use my hands. And if you're doing a foil, you wanna be really careful if you do use a trowel because until you get the epoxy over the surface, it is very easy to scratch. Now I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna take the epoxy and I'm gonna push it and roll it over the edge and making sure I get in all of these little nooks and crannies of the rock edge and then make sure I run my hand up underneath that edge so that epoxy will flow really nicely. So when you're measuring your epoxy, you want to make sure when you measure that you're not just measuring the surface, you're including those edges in your calculations because you've got to have enough of that product to cover your edges. Now there's a lot of confusion in the industry right now as to do I take my edges when I do a flood coat or just a clear coat like what I'm doing or not. And the answer is if you're using a product that's similar to stone coat or stone coat and you're doing about three ounces per square foot, you do not want to tape your edges. If you tape your edges with this amount of product and then you allow that tape to stay on the edge for 30 minutes to an hour, like we would do a dirty pour, your epoxy starting to set up. Once you pull that tape, this epoxy has set up and it, there's not enough product on the surface to push over your edges. So when you pull your tape, you're gonna get drips on your edges. Now, if you really wanna tape your edges on your clear flood coat, or a, a clear flood coat, then you want to use more product than three ounces per square foot because you want to have enough product on the surface that when you do pull the tape, that, pro that product is still trying to self-level and you get nice, even amount of products rolling over the edges. So if you're going to tape your edges on a flood coat, then you need at least, I would say, six ounces per square foot. Three ounces per square foot is all I use on my flood coats because I take my hand and I rub my edges and I really make sure that my edges are covered and this allows the epoxy to roll. Also, you wanna make sure you're doing it in the right temperature. If it's cooler than 70 degrees, you don't wanna pour because you're gonna get what we call a soft cure. You wanna make sure that when you pour, you're above 70 degrees, that epoxy is gonna be nice and fluid and it'll flow really nicely. What I'll do is I'll come back in, a, I don't know, three to five minutes and I'll retorch, make sure I don't have any bubbles that appear and I'll do that three times. After that, I'll just let it cure and come back 24 hours later. And in this case, I'm not going to put a second flood coat. And the reason is this is not a high traffic piece. It's going to be a little sofa table. So there's no need for me to come back and put another flood coat. Now, 
if I were to have put colorants or spray paints or mica powders or color paste in my first layer of epoxy, absolutely, I would come back and put a clear flood coat. By adding all of those colorants, spray paints, mica powders, all of that to your epoxy, you're actually compromising the integrity of that epoxy. You've taken down your heat resistance, you've taken down your scratch resistance, and you've also compromised your food safety rating. So by coming back over the top with a clear flood coat, you've brought all of those elements back to where they belong and you'll get a beautiful, beautiful finish. Our clear coat is done. And if you decide to go forward with the ultimate top coat, we have great videos that go in depth that show you the application method. It'll be linked in the description below. Let me know, would you leave it high gloss? Would you go matte UTC or would you go gloss UTC? I love it. We're gonna put some cute little legs. Not really sure what kind of legs we're gonna put on here, but it's gonna be right behind my sofa. And I'm gonna put some lamps and some pictures and I'm super excited. All of these products can be found on my website, rk3designs.com. The foil and the foil adhesive can be found at Artistic Painting Studio. We will have a link in the description of this video along with a coupon code. I encourage you to check out Jennifer's website. It is amazing and follow her on social media. And remember, most important guys, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. Until next week, love ya.